Avalanches have a wide variety of personalities. They can be small or large, wet or dry, slabs or loose snow. Sometimes avalanches are seemingly spontaneous, while at other times they require big triggers to get them to start. Some avalanches exist everywhere in the landscape, and some are only found in specific places. Some avalanches release in relatively predictable patterns, while others fail in surprising ways. The avalanche danger is a broad brushstroke of daily conditions. Avalanche problems are an extension of the danger scale and allow you, the traveler, to better visualize the danger and make decisions based upon the kind of avalanche you may encounter. Avalanche problems are defined using four elements, the kind of avalanche, where that avalanche exists in the terrain, how likely you are to trigger it, and how big it will be. These ideas are communicated by forecasters using icons and text. Avalanche character is simply a kind of avalanche with unique characteristics that influence terrain and travel choices. In the US, we use nine distinct characters. Aspect elevation diagrams depict where these avalanches are most likely to be found. Picture this diagram as a mountain. The outer ring represents lower elevations, and the uppermost ring, the upper elevations. These diagrams are not a map and are not meant to be used as such. Rather, they are an idea of how the pattern of avalanche conditions may have developed. In this case, the diagram shows the forecaster expects avalanches on all aspects at upper elevations. In another scenario, the forecaster expects avalanches on east-facing aspects at all elevations. The chance of triggering an avalanche, or likelihood, varies day to day and sometimes hour to hour. Likelihood is visualized here with the size and the frequency of rings. Bigger, more frequent rings equals a higher likelihood of a human-triggered avalanche. It is described using the terms such as unlikely, likely, or certain. The term applied reflects the highest likelihood the forecaster expects on that day. Most avalanches are large when compared to a human, and all are dangerous if they are encountered in consequential terrain. Size is described using terms such as small, large, and historic. The size shown in a forecast is the largest expected avalanche. These four elements combined illustrate the type of expected avalanche. For example, here is a persistent slab on east-facing slopes that is relatively small and is difficult to trigger. Here we see a change in the location and the size and the likelihood. Remember that avalanche problems are part of the day's avalanche danger. For example, here you are on a day with moderate avalanche danger. The avalanche problem is persistent slabs on mid and upper elevation slopes that are small and difficult to trigger. As you can see, there are specific places where trouble exists. Overnight, we had a foot of new snow, the danger increases to considerable, and the persistent slabs on the same middle and upper elevation slopes are larger and more easily triggered. Ultimately, safe travel within the terrain becomes much more constrained. Another way to look at it is that your terrain management decisions may vary between days with the same danger level. Here you are on a day with moderate danger with small, easy to trigger wind slabs on north facing slopes. Compare that to another moderate danger day where the avalanches are larger, not so easy to trigger, persistent slabs. In this case, even though the overall danger rating is the same, the avalanches are larger and more unpredictable and your travel decisions should be influenced accordingly. Each day is different. The avalanche danger and associated avalanche problems are tools to communicate the day's hazard to the user. Hmm. Your job is to use them 